In this tutorial, we're going to be taking the vectors we created from the vector drawing tutorial and then toolpath them using multiple open covers of the software and the inlay toolpath operation. We will then be discussing the major points to keep in mind when creating inlay toolpaths and then discussing the order in which best to cut them in. So let's start by opening a copy of the software and let's navigate to the vectors that we've drawn in the previous tutorial. Don't worry if you didn't join in or you haven't watched that tutorial. You can simply just use the pre-prepared file in the projects folder and just select it to open that. So before we go ahead and create the toolpaths for this, let's just select all the vectors and just see the size of the vectors that we're working with. I'm just going to drag a box around the vectors on screen. If we look down the bottom right of the software, you can see that we've got a width of 9.8 inches and a height of the vectors of 5.9 inches. So I may as well round those up to a width of 10 and a height of 6. So to do that, simply just come over to the transform objects and let's set the selected object size. So I want to specify a width of 10 inches. And as you can see, because I have link XY checked, the height has automatically been scaled to match. So if I wanted to specify a specific value for the height, all I need to do is simply just uncheck that and just simply type in the value that I want and then it will scale it to those values so all I need to do is simply click apply and that's made that minute adjustment and then I can just simply just close this form now so the idea for this project is that we're going to end up with three parts that we've machined the two of those being the letters that we're going to cut out and the last one is going to be the part that they sit into so we first of all we're going to need to cut out some shapes for the U and the S and then we're going to want to pocket also on the one part the U and the S for those two shapes to slot into. What I also wouldn't mind doing is creating a border around this part so what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to offset this outer oval inwards so that we can then create a border which we're also then going to pocket in between the inner border to the letters so if I just select the outer oval, so first I'm going to deselect by clicking the white space and then I'm going to select the outer oval and then I'm going to come down to the offset and layout and use the tool to offset selected vectors. We want to offset this inward so I'm going to make sure that that's selected and then I'm going to want to offset it by a distance of 0.35 of an inch. I'm just going to deselect these and then I'm going to click the button to offset as you can see that's now created me my offset so the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to first want to create the pocket uh, for the center of our part so I'm just going to close this form and I'm going to deselect the vectors by clicking into the white space and now we can start creating some toolpaths so we can do this by going to the toolpaths tab and we can do that by clicking this button here or selecting F12 on your keyboard and before we create any toolpaths, we must always make sure that we check the material setup. So let's go over and click the set button here. And let's just make sure that all these parameters are correct. So let's make sure we've got three quarters of an inch material. And our Z0 is set from the top of the block. I want to change where the XY datum position is at the moment, as when designing, uh, it was handy to have the XY datum in the center. But now I'll we're thinking about machining, I prefer as a preference to machine from the lower left. So I'm just going to change that to the lower left. I'm just going to check the rapid Z gaps and the home start position. If you're going to run this on your machine, just make sure these are applicable for you. And then click OK. So let's start by creating our inner pocket. So I'm just going to select the inner oval that we created and then select the pocket toolpath icon here. I'm going to have a start depth at the top of the material, so that's zero, 0, and I'm going to cut down an eighth of an inch. So let's just type in that value. And for this, I'm going to use a quarter inch end mill. So just select that and make sure the speeds and feeds apply for you, and then click OK. If you ever want to make any minor adjustments just for this toolpath and this toolpath only, we can use the edit option. But these all look okay for me, so I'm just going to click OK. 
for this pocketing strategy, I want to make sure that we're using an offset strategy. So that's already selected for me. So just make sure you've got that selected as well. And then we can move down and give this a name. So I'm just going to call this pocket in a oval. And then I'm going to click calculate. And we can preview that by previewing the selected toolpath. As you can see, that's pocketed down an eighth of an inch. So let's click close on the preview toolpath form. And let's go back to the 2D view. So let's go up here and just select this here. As now, we want to concentrate on creating the pockets and the cutout path for our letters. So let's deselect the oval and let's just box select our letters. And we need to make sure now that we're going to use this specialty toolpath operation for an inlay. So that's this icon here. So if we just select that, and as we're going to be creating the pockets for our letters, we need to select the female inlay pocket. So let's just select that button here. You'll notice straight away that look, this looks very familiar to a standard pocketing toolpath. Yet there are some differences, and I will explain those to you now. So if we just imagine for a second that we were cutting out these letters with a standard profiling toolpath, that all these internal corners, as we're cutting with a round tool, would all be left with an external radius going around here. And all these external corners would cut fine. Yet if we were cutting the pocket for these, it would be the opposite way around. So all these external corners would be left with an internal radius going around, and all these uh, internal corners would be cut perfectly. So if you imagine trying to slot in a letter that you've cut out whose internal corner has had an external radius applied to it and you're trying to fit that in to a pocket whose internal corner has cut fine. So as you can imagine it's not going to fit very well. So what the inlay pocketing toolpath does it makes sure that all the corners all have radiuses on them. So for instance, these internal corners will get applied with an external radius and these external corners will all have an internal radius. So that when it comes to mating the parts together, they will actually fit. So let's start by specifying the start depth for these female pockets. We already know that we've created an internal pocket of an eighth of an inch. So to make sure that we're not going to be cutting uh, thin air, we need to make sure that our start depth is an eighth of an inch already into the material. So let's specify 0.125 in there and we want our pocket depth for these letters to also be an eighth of an inch. So in the cut depth let's also specify 0.125. Now the next option is quite important so when we come to select our tool we need to make sure that the tool that we use for the pockets and the male parts for this we need to make sure that they're using the same tool as the radius that gets applied to the internal and external corners is going to be the equal to the radius of the tool. So I'm going to make sure that we select a quarter inch end mill for both of these parts. So I'm just going to select that. Make sure if you are running this you check your feeds and speeds and just click OK. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking a quarter inch tool is far too big for doing the pockets and the actual cutout of the letters themselves because the actual radius that is going to be left on there is going to be really quite obvious. But the reason I've done that is for that reason. I want to make it obvious to us as to the reason why we use the female inlay pockets and the actual inlay toolpaths. So for the pocketing strategy, again, I want to select an offset style and I'm just going to choose the same as we did before, so that was a climb. And the next most important option is our pocket allowance. So this is an allowance that we specify the toolpath to overcut our vectors so that it gives a bit more play in the parts. So if we specified no pocket allowance, it's likely that our parts are going to find it very hard to mate together. Yet if we specify a small pocket allowance, that allows a tiny bit of play for the parts to fit together more easily. So depending on obviously the accuracy of your machine as well, you may want to just specify more of an, uh, a pocket allowance or less of one. So I'm just going to specify a pocket allowance of 0 0.01 and 
I'm then going to just give this a name as pocket inlay letters and just click calculate and we can now preview that toolpath as well so as you can see that's actually now cut in an eighth of an inch below the eighth of an inch pocket that we created which is exactly what we wanted obviously if you don't have this you need to just make sure that when uh, specifying the start depth on the inlay letters that you have specified that it started at an eighth of an inch If we click on the 2D view, I can also demonstrate to you the internal and external uh, radiuses that are going to be applied on the toolpath. So in the 2D view, all we need to do now is simply click on the pocket inlay letters, which will then draw the toolpath on the 2D view. And if we come down to the bottom and select to have a solid preview, it'll actually show you the path that the toolpath is going to take. So if I just zoom in a tiny bit, you can see straight away that on the internal uh, corners it's applied an external radius and on the external corners it's applied an internal radius. If I just zoom in a tiny bit more you'll also see that it has actually come out from the vectors. Now that's the allowance that we've specified of 0 0.01. So that's all looking fine. So I'm just going to click F on the keyboard just to zoom to fit back there. And before we go ahead and create the actual male parts in a new copy of the software. Let's just finish off the toolpath that we've got to create here. So our final toolpath will be our cutout path. So if I just turn off the preview for the toolpath and just deselect in the white space, I'm just going to close the preview toolpath form and then I'm going to select our outer oval and select the profile toolpath option. And I want to cut through the whole of the material so I don't know what that is, specify Z equals and make sure that we're cutting from the top of the block. I'm going to use uh, a quarter inch end mill, so just make sure I select that and press OK on that. I want to make sure that I'm machining on the outside of the vectors and I'm going to add some tabs to this just to hold the part in place while I cut it out. So I'm going to go to add tabs and edit tabs and then we can specify a constant number. So I'm going to specify a constant number of 4 and then I'm just going to click to add tabs on that and we can then close that as I like the look of where they are and click close and we can simply just give this a name so I'm just going to call this profile cutout and click calculate and we just preview that Now in reality it would actually make more sense to actually do the male parts first. Now the reason for this is that when it comes to actually slotting them together we may actually find that the 0.01 pocket allowance that we've actually added to the pockets for our letters to sit into may actually be too large. So what we could do is we could actually start with a smaller pocket allowance and then just run that after we've created the letters, slot them in see if they fit very well. If they don't we can then just go ahead and then actually increase the pocket allowance here, recalculate it and then run that on the machine and then try the fit again. So with that in mind let's open a new copy of the software for our mail inlay parts and let's create a new file and for the width and height I'm just going to go back to the original copy of the software and I'm going to go to the 2D view I'm just going to highlight those just so I can see what width and height they are. So I can see that the width is uh, around six and a quarter inches and the height is around three inches. So what we can do while we're here is just simply right click those selected vectors and click to copy. And then we can go back to the other open copy of the software and we can specify a width of eight inches and a height of 4 inches. Now for the Z0 I'm going to set that off the top of the block and the thickness of material I'm going to use for our letters is going to be half an inch. As I'm going to be going straight to toolpathing I'm going to keep the XY data position in my preferred uh, lower left position and when we've done that just click OK. I'm now going to paste in the vectors that we copied from the other copy of the software so in the white space just right click and click the option to paste. 
as you can see this has brought the vectors in in the exact same position as they were in the previous copy of the software so I just want to center that into this copy so just simply while the vectors are still selected come to the align selected objects option and select this option here to center that to our work area a shortcut for that also you can also press the F9 key on your keyboard now we've done that we can go straight over to the toolpaths so I'm just going to select this option here I know that we've just set this up but it's always best to check the material setup because for one that we want to make sure that our rapid Z gaps and home start position are all uh, safe values for this job so just double check the Z0 off the top of the block half an inch thickness material and the XY data position in the lower left the rapid Z gaps 0 0.2 inches above and the home start position XY0 and 0 0.8 inches off the start position so when you're happy just click OK and we can then go ahead and select the inlay toolpath option here and as we want to create uh, the letters straight through I just want to select the uh, straight option for the male inlay insert and we can now start specifying our options so I know that our start depth we want to start from the top of the material so I want to specify 0, 0 and our cut depth I want to make sure that it cuts through the whole of the material so simple z equals will tell you our thickness of material is half an inch again we must make sure that we use the same tool that we used to create the female pockets so if we remember that was a quarter inch ml so just make sure that we select that again make sure the feeds and speeds are all the same and then click OK we may also want to add some tabs to these letters to keep them in place while we're cutting them out so we can click to add tabs I just want to change those to say a quarter inch in length and maybe a thickness of just 0 0.1 we can then click to uh, assign some tabs so we may just want to just manually just come along and just select the places where we may want some tabs so in where you think that may be appropriate and then just close that we can then go ahead and give this a name so I'm just going to call this mail inlay letters and scroll down and click calculate as you can see if I just swivel this round you can see our toolpath and where it's actually putting in the tabs in these places so if we just preview this So we can see how the toolpath is rounding off all the corners so that it will then fit into the pocket that we've also created using the inlay toolpath form. We may also notice a few things that we don't like using the preview. So we may notice that this area here is quite thin and we may also notice that uh, this tab here may become quite weak because of the material that's been cut away here. So we can make these few simple changes by first of all we can go to the 2D view and we can just individually select these letters and just drag them away from each other with the keyboard and select the other one and just drag that over a little and then we can go back into the toolpath itself and we can go to edit tabs and we can just move these around a bit so I may just want to drag that around a bit more and this one I may want to have more towards the top. I may even want to add another one just to make sure it's more secure so I may just want to come over and just add another one there and I can click close and then I can just recalculate this toolpath and so I can see what the changes are that we've made we can simply just click the reset preview and then select again to preview the selected toolpath if we're happy with the changes we can then go ahead and then save out the toolpaths so to do that simply close the preview toolpath form go to the save toolpath icon make sure that our toolpath is highlighted and is listed here select our appropriate post processor for our machine and then simply save out the toolpaths so that now brings us to the end of this tutorial if we are going to run this on the machine as we discussed it may be beneficial to start off with the male inlay parts so that then we can do the female pocket with a smaller pocket allowance and then we can then test the fit 
if it doesn't fit very well or it's too tight then we can uh, just add more onto that allowance, recalculate the toolpath and then rerun it on the machine until we get the perfect fit. 